Okay. Okay, the next topic on the list is uh, the, the developments in, uh, um, in USB audio. Um, as you might know, I had started working on the USB stack about six years ago, and I had changed, uh, basically, I had worked on all the USB drivers, including uh, the, the printer driver, the COM driver, obviously the host controller drivers, and, and, and USB MSD, so the, the basically the media support, uh, the, the USB stick support, etc. And then, now, finally, I, ca I, I reached, uh, <laughs> I, the last driver that I had touched now is uh, the audio driver. Um, maybe the multi... Um, first, I want to give a, a, a brief, incomplete overview of the MMP subsystem. I mean, it's, it's really big. This thing is humongous and complex, and I just want to explain the stuff that is relevant to the recent developments in USB audio and the, the stuff that was done. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit about the USB stack so that, so that you have a little bit of background information of which drivers interact with each other. Talk about a little about the USB audio device class and how it's currently supported in OS2. About the driver, USB audio, and uh, about a new DLL, which is uh, an I.O. procedure to, um, to, to support uh, playing uh, uh, WAV files, which, have, which are sampled with a sample rate that's not natively supported by the hardware. This is, this is what the problem is. The hardware um, only can play uh, specific sample rates, and if you have a sound file that doesn't it has a different was sampled with a different sample rate, it just won't play. It will play too fast, too slow, whatever, and it sounds weird. Okay. Um, then a couple of conclusions, some acknowledgments, and some closing words. Okay, for the for the MMPM subsystem, multimedia presentation manager subsystem, there's a part that's called a media control interface, which provides services to play and record audio, pictures, video. There's a part that's called MMIO, Multimedia I.O., which is uh, basically it's the ability to, uh, to read uh, data from a file, play it, or seek in the file, uh, rewind the file, close the file, record data in a file. And the file, in this sense, is uh, it's not only a real file on, on disk. It could also be uh, a, a basically an HTTP stream that shows up as a file. So that's basically it's a... It's a concept to, to, to play from a, from, a, from a data source and, and, and record to a, data, uh, to a data target, so to say. And MMIO basically um, has something that's called I.O. procedures, which, uh, which basically um, support exactly this access, file access. And then there's another badly described part, which is the codec part. Codecs are, um, are for um, expanding and uh, compressing and decompressing data. Okay, and, and maybe uh, what, what's, what's interesting to know is that everything of this MMIO executes in, as in a normal user application uh, uh, privilege. It's, it's nothing, it's not a driver in a way that, that it's running at ring zero, high privilege. It's, it's basically, it runs in the context of PM shell, which is uh, basically the program that drives your desktop. Okay, for the USB stack, just a short, uh, uh, short uh, uh, collection. You have host controller drivers. They do the real work. They, they serve real hardware interrupts. They program the hardware, so they're doing the real thing. Um, there's a, there's a, then there's a central management driver called usbdeep.sys, which I uh, talk to uh, a little later. Then there's class drivers. Class drivers uh, have the job to basically for the specific type of device, like uh, a USB stick or a, 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 a data media, like a, uh, sorry, um, a USB microphone, a USB printer, they are all different devices and they have to do different things. So there are some high level commands, uh, which are obviously class specific. The functionality is class specific. And these drivers, which I've listed here, they basically handle these specific device classes. For example, the HIT driver, handles uh, human interface devices like mouse and keyboard. MSD handles uh, USB sticks. The COM driver handles COM ports, basically, USB COM ports. PRT handles uh, USB printers. The Ethernet driver handles, well, in this sense, uh, rather limited um, Ethernet devices, for uh, USB Ethernet devices, and the audio driver 
handles obviously you, uh, audio devices. Okay, now a um, couple of uh, words. Um, Just a quick question. Yeah? Why are all the drivers, class drivers, got SIS accepting in the Ethernet? Yes, uh, because the Endis driver, which is the Mac drivers, they have to have an extension of OS2. I don't know why, but yeah, all, okay. all your Ethernet drivers have an extension of OS2. But it's a normal, it's just the normal drivers as any, any other driver. They have a specific structure because they have specific entry points, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, in the end, it's just a driver. So the same thing with ADD. It's also a driver, but it, it's, it's an adapter device driver, so it has to have this extension. It's some, yeah. It is. It is this way. Okay, just um, now you might ask yourself, where's the keyboard driver and the mouse driver? They are, they are there. And the speciality is that the keyboard mouse driver hook up to USBD hit So um, uh, th this is be because most, most of the time you have basically a device like, uh, for example, an infrared receiver that can handle mouse and keyboard. So uh, the hit driver basically handles the one device and the mouse and the sys driver, uh, the mouse and the keyboard driver do the specific mouse and the keyboard part of handling. Okay, um, the USB audio device class in general handles, obviously, uh, handles uh, audio recording and playback. And also, um, there's a very part, large part of the, of the USB audio specification that deals with additional controls like volume base, treble, balance, you, Dolby surround, blah, blah, blah. It's a real thick specification. Um, and you can set the sampling rate and you can do some automatic pitch adjust. So that these are um, all functionalities that, uh, that are handled by this uh, specification. Okay, now, now to USB audio sys. What does it do? It obviously it handles this uh, audio device class, but currently it only supports version one of the audio device class spec. There, I think they are already at version three. But don't uh, don't worry. Uh, Windows only recently, I think in the last year, uh, started to support um, um, the, the version two of the spec, which means in practice, almost all audio devices today on the market they are version one. So. Just you can move this problem to the future. Unfortunately, uh, the version two of the spec is different from version one, and it's not going to be compatible. You will need to write a new driver. Okay, MIDI. MIDI uh, pops up in in the code base of USB audio, but it's not supported really. It's half brewed, half baked. It's not done, and um, also. I don't have a USB audio device that supports MIDI natively, and you have to have that. And I just don't have a device like that, so I cannot even test they, it. They are out there? That's a good question. In the spec, you, there is um, in the spec there's the, it's, uh, it defines MIDI. It supports MIDI, but yeah, I have never seen a. It's just a serial port. That running a yeah. Data. I cannot tell you. I I, I, have no, I don't have such a device, so I don't know. Okay, what, what does it support? Uh, it does support setting uh, volume based travel and it supports setting the sampling rate. So, um, here we go. Um, the sampling rate setting is limited because um, just from naturally, most of the devices that you can buy, they're limited to sampling rates of 44.1 kilohertz, which is CD ROM, and 48 kilohertz. Uh, which is, uh, let's say, I think, it's what they call, uh, let's say, professional audio. Or ta uh, digital DAT is also one of those, but my device even has higher sampling rates, but let's put it simple, uh, everything below 44, one kilohertz is not supported by about no device today because these sample rates are just not used commonly anymore. If you look at Windows sound files, WAV files, they start at 44, 1.1 kilohertz, I think. They don't even have anything less than that. So this is the problem. Device manufacturers build devices that support the Windows mainstream, obviously. OK, now, now on to USB WAF.dll. Um, we were facing the problem that, at one point in time, USB audio was at least operational. But the problem is you still couldn't play anything, because <laughs> you had files. If you look at your OS2 sound directory, there are files, you know, the 
boop, 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 the cuckoo file and stuff. There are, let's say, 11, uh, uh, 0 0.25 hertz, so a, a fourth of the, of the sampling rate that, the, that, that are normally supported by these uh, devices. So it didn't help. You, you could hear something, but it didn't sound right. <laughs> so um, I tried to find a way. I, I, I was pondering about a way to um, what can we do to uh, basically pretend to the device that the sound go is sampled with 44.1 kilohertz, where in fact it's sampled with a different rate. So uh, I came. Finally, I decided to implement an I/O procedure. In the sense, normally in IO procedure, as I said, it's, it's basic for reading data from a file for playback, for example, handing it over to the rest of the system to play it. So I decided to build a, um, a sample rate conversion. Uh, I, I, I decided to build an IO procedure that basically handles WAF files, but offers a sample rate conversion on the fly, which, uh, which means uh, you click on a file and it just plays, and when you click on the file, the data is all, all, uh, automatically converted into the target sample rate that the device can play. Now, um, the implementation currently has a couple. Uh, has has an, ha currently the implementation in this I/O procedure has the limitation that the source sample rate and the target sample rate have to be an even multiple of each other. So, 11.025 and 44.100 is okay. But 8,044,100 is not okay because it's not an even multiple. But more to that later. Okay, because what I can say, what I did is, um, since uh, Roderick has always been bugging me, where is he? Where is Roderick? He's, ah. been, bugging he, he's, he's been bugging me. It's, do you use higher memory? Do you use higher memory? Please use higher memory. I mean, he was <laughs> because uh, uh, the, the the reason why this is. Um, why this is kind of important here in, in this topic is the, as I said, the I.O. procedure will in execute as part of the PM shell. It's, it's, it's your desktop application. And um, if you, if you uh, need large parts of memory, then you have problems with the desktop eventually. So the problem now is if I upsample data, what it currently does is it's, it's just duplicating samples. That's why we have this fixed relationship of source and sample rate. It has to be an even multiples, and just can duplicate samples to, to basically blow up the, the data rate. So uh, it can easily be a factor of eight between your source, uh, source data, um, the, the, the source data amount of bytes and the target. So I decided to move everything. All the memory is allocated in high memory so that your desktop <laughs> will not suffer. <laughs> um, also, oh, there's some text missing here. Hmm. You're, not, you're not the only one. They've all been cut off. Oh, okay. Well, also, when I was developing this DLL, obviously I did errors, as everyone <laughs> who's developing something. And it crashed, and it really took the system down. So I decided, OK, I cannot, I cannot sell this to anyone. So I put in some exception handling. So in other words, if, if it traps inside the DLL, there's a clean, uh, degra uh, graceful degradation <laughs> that leads you, you know, that, that, prevent, that, that prevents that, you, that, your, that your workplace share will trap. And it will basically do nothing, which is better than crashing your system. So I, I did try to make it stable and, yeah. Okay, now to the, to the status of USB audio. Uh, as I said, oh no, I didn't say, that's what I'm saying. Now, the, 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 the last version that IBM delivered for this driver already trapped the system on boot. It was uh, very simple. I, I read it, I read it in, uh, on, some, um, on some mailing list or so, I read uh, some, some guy who's, who's saying, now with blah, 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 it, crap, it, it traps already on boot. So that was the status. And the status uh, also was that we only had the, for our development of USB audio, we only had the DDK code available, which was, which was uh, not too bad. At least uh, we had something you know, to start with. So, uh, and, but we didn't know, we, we couldn't be sure that, that the, the, the code in the DDK is, has, was on the same level as the last execute, but we just didn't know that. Now, um, Arkanoa also delivers a USB audio dot sys at the moment, but um, I don't 
really know. I think it's the, the status is that they still cannot play, that they have the problem that they that they don't sample, resample the data. So they, you can hear something, but it it it, uh, it suffers from this uh, this the sampling rate problem. Okay, now from from this Arca Noah version on, what I did was, oops, text is missing. I have to read it in my presentation. Yeah, the thing is, is that each the bottom of each frame is a bit cut off. Yeah. No, not everything. Okay, um, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of, there's a lot of unfortunately there's a lot of text missing here. Um, ca can we can I have the can we switch over from from this thing? Can I? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let let me shortly um, tell you. For the USB WAF, apart from what I told you about. Um, about sample rate conversion, it also implements two codecs. It's ALOR and MULA. It's They're not in common use anymore, but it, originally ALOR and EULA was relevant for if you wanted to compress telephone signals. And it's not a data compression, it's rather a signal compression. So uh, it's just a means to, to better use your, 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 sam your, your, your quantization bits of, of, of your A to D converter. So, yeah. I just thought, you know, just for the fun of it, I said, ah, there's some AMU law files around, so I just implement the codex. One of those is so. the system, the other is the yes, exactly. I think law is uh, American and ALOR is European, I think. Huh? I think ALOR is American, ALOR is American. I'm not sure. Yeah, but anyways, <laughs> no, I, I implemented these because there are some files around that uh, are AMU law. So. And, and the, the codex hooked into the I.O. procedure. So the, the I.O. procedure was written that if a file is not a pure, a plain PCM file, but it's A or Mueller con uh, converted, the codec will automatically be called to convert it, or to, to, uh, to com decompress and compress the signal. So, um, Okay, um, for the for the status. Uh, as I said, w from from uh, this A Arcanoa 11.14 USB audio driver, what I what I did in addition was, I fixed the volume, base, and travel controls. They, they did just didn't work, or they yeah. Then there was a then there was a scaling error inside MMPM itself that uh, you you would never be able to completely. Uh, set the volume to 100 percent because it was a simple integer problem. They, they divided some value by 100 and multiplied it with x for, let's say, x percent of volume. And if you know integer arithmetic, you will not get uh, the full range if you try if you do that. So I, I, I re reverted the scaling inside the driver so that you can really crank it up up to the max. It's just the thing that yeah that, that came along the way. Um, now. The biggest part, or the, the biggest part, uh, that was done in the last, say, four, five to six weeks, was to also implement the sample rate conversion not only in this I/O procedure, but also to put it into the driver itself. And the reason was what I had forgotten, really, I admit, was that there's something called DART. It's the Direct Audio Real Time System. And this is basically a means that uh, OS2 ha came up with to bu completely bypass <laughs> all of MMIO because of performance reasons. If you have a, if you have, let's say, if you have a uh, game application and you need fast audio, un uninterrupted audio, uh, they just everything tends to use Dart. And it's also true for Firefox. Firefox uses the libkrp uh, library to 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 play sound, and 
it's based on Dart. So um, finally, um, Wim Rule stepped in. He was seeing that I was working on it, maybe had pity for me because I was all alone, I don't know. Or maybe had too much time, <laughs> I don't know. At least um, he basically first, he pulled all of my sample rate conversion code into the, into the, uh, to, into the driver, basically. But then he decided, hmm, there are some devices like 48 kilohertz that don't evenly divide by 11,000. 025. So, what what he finally came up with was uh, with a with a sample rate conversion that ca basically can um, s um, convert between uh, non-even multiples of the sample rate. So any any relation any ratio of target and source sample rate is supported now. So and this all went into the USB audio driver, and we were testing this for the last six or so weeks, and uh, we finally got it done, <laughs> and now it's in USB audio. Okay, the conclusion is we now have, oops, sorry. Uh, the conclusion is we have a working USB audio and um, I hope I can uh, demonstrate this a little. Um, we can handle legacy sampling rates, the old ones I say, 8,000 hertz, 11, 025, 22, 050. We have additional codec support to, uh, to, to, to support uh, ALAW and MULAW files, com uh, compressed files. And I think we have filled, at least filled the gap uh, until we have some, you know, updated uh, Unior driver because people are using USB audio just, you know, as a replacement because their internal uh, sound doesn't work, for example. I mean, yeah. this is... Uh, I get trapped here on the audience Which one? Unior? Yeah, Unior. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, you, you will find the drivers as always. I mean, if people have used uh, the drivers, uh, you will find them at hops. I always put, put my stuff at hops. Um, now, to the, 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 there are occasional questions of, you know, what, what is with your USB stack compared to the AN USB stack? Uh, let, let's put it this way. You can use the AN USB stack, no problem. And uh, you should be able to add at least the, um, the USB MSD.ADD driver for my package and the USB audio driver. They should cooperate with, with each other. For the rest of the drivers, you have to you know, stick to one coherent set of drivers. But I think uh, you could pull these two drivers from my package and use them with the AN stack if you wanted to. I haven't tested this extensively, but it should work. OK, well, for the acknowledgments, um, I would Obviously, I would like to um, thank Wim Rule for his support. He, he had put this into USB audio sys, and he, we also fixed um, the we also fixed the host controller driver USB EHCD dot sys to be able to do this to to sub, you know, sub, can do the sample rate conversion. There was some there was some restriction in the in the host controller driver, the USB. 2.0 host controller driver that basically was a hindrance to, to get this thing done and he, we also fixed that. So, and then I want to thank all the people who have reported bugs and, you know, and, 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 and where I got feedback from. So that was Neil Waldhauer. He used this USB audio because uh, Unior wouldn't work on his laptop. That's what, what, his, uh, that's what uh, he was doing. Wim Brule, obviously. And Yuri had also reported about um, his device because he had a 48 kilohertz device and then finally that made it necessary to to en to enhance the sample rate conversion to work. And every and every other people who have you know reported uh, bugs and traps sent me trap screens and whatever you know over all these years because without a trap screen or something it's difficult to fix something. Okay, now some closing words. Maybe, as, a, as we heard so mu multiple times, uh, if, if you have a problem and you have a trap screen, please just send us the trap screen because a trap screen really helps. From a trap screen, I know where the so I can find out the source location. When I have the source location and the code, I can deduce you know, from the parameters that go in you know, what is really going on. Just, you have a very good chance to fix something if you have a trap screen. Now all the drivers that, or almost all of the drivers that I that I built and that I send out, they they support tracing. So you can turn on the tracing facility. Does everyone know what the tracing facility is? 
it's traceformat.exe. <laughs> you, it, it's, it's described in the readme file in my driver set, how, you know, how to set this up, how to use it, and how to send me a trace file. Basically, a trace file uh, contains, you know, basically operational data, parameter settings or whatever. Whatever I write out, the, the driver writes out something into the trace buffer, information, and then it's saved in a file, and you can send the file to me, and from the tracing results, I can deduce if something goes wrong, where it goes wrong, and what, what's, what's odd about it. Okay, and if, 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 you, if you send out a, a trap or a report or whatever, then send, you know, as always, put in the info, what driver version are you using, what did you do with that, that made the trap happen, so the, 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 the typical stuff. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, that's the end of the presentation. There's actually a question coming in okay. over uh, ISC, and it says, "Please ask about USB 3.0." Yeah, <laughs> good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not working on it. I don't know if David's working on it. He is. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that the support will come from Arkanoa. Yeah, because uh, I don't. I, I don't think I will have the time to, to write a USB 3 driver. I talked to him when, before he came, before he decided that he couldn't make it to warp stock and what he would present about. And he has started writing a skeleton driver for USB 3.0. Um, so it's in the beginning phases, but from what I understood, discussing what he could potentially present, the Wi Fi driver support and the new. Unipolt replacement based on free BSD drivers is much further progressed. Mm. There's a relationship between the two because they both share eventually the same software library that makes the calls that are implemented on free BSD uh, callable on OS2. But implementing that is quite a challenge. So probably USB 3.0, from what I understood from him, is uh, is further down the track than. Mm. Uh, Wi-Fi in the out. Yeah, unfortunately, um, USB 3 is, um, I looked at the spec and they came up with new things, so it's it's more complex than USB 2. So it's really a new driver. You, you, you just, it's not a minor change to the existing drivers. It will be, it will be more effort. It's not that simple. Okay, and now let's hope for the best. Um, for what follows, don't do this at home. <laughs> because what I did, um, I, in I installed, um, I installed uh, Ecom Station in a virtual box. You can you can do this. This is not <laughs> this is no bad thing. But um, running USB audio under a virtual box is no good, as I experienced because I did some tests now. I wanted to present something, so I brought the laptop. So I said, okay, for for the presentation, it's it's okay, but. Uh, obviously, a virtual box has problems with iso isochronous transfers. It's, it's basically a transfer mode that is used for for audio devices. It's the stream. It's streaming data, and it, it, it doesn't. It looks like a virtual box has a problem with that. It doesn't. Yeah. But I can play a sound now. So I'm just playing directly out of the sound directory. So no change files. Just playing the ones that are there. I don't need your screen. You can hear it. So I, this is lo-fi, okay? But I, I didn't. I, there was no way to to bring a big audio set with me, so I just used this one, okay? So so they all work. And now, now you can hear this this, this dropout stuff. It's it's uh, it's because of VirtualBox because I tested this on my um, on my desktop PC and it was not a problem. So okay. So. Yeah, that's the. It's not too bad, actually. Yeah. yeah, it could be worse. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's uh, that's about it. That's about use the audio.